this presentation came about um, because we've got more and more of our lecturers having to make a transition from working within the classroom to working in an online environment. Right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine, yeah. yeah oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so as, as the student, as the lecturers make that transition, it brings up lots of questions and it brings up lots of issues in terms of how they're going to work with students online because it is very different. So the background to this came out of discussions with lecturers saying, OK, so we know what to do in the classroom. It's very defined. It's very, you know, we have lots of experience. But when we come to working online, how does this work? It's, it's mm. something we're not used to. And it's something that's not very clearly defined for us. Therefore, the, you, you can get situations where lecturers actually turn around and say, I don't like this. It's yeah. so different from what I normally do. I'd rather not do the online elements. Mm -hmm. But it's becoming more and more prevalent and it's becoming more and more popular. Therefore, lecturers are going to have to make that transition. Yeah. Can I ask you, Liz, um, the... I presume that it's part of uh, Glindor's sort of strategy to, to introduce more of a distance learning element into your offer. Um, but, and you're using the Moodle e-learning uh, virtual learning environment. Are you using the VLE or the Moodle for the students that are physically, you know, local to you as well? So Absolutely. So already have some experience of of using Moodle as a, med as a medium to support their teaching? Yeah, absolutely. The Moodle is used throughout the university. Um, it's, it's becoming more and more popular with lecturers as they're getting used to it. And mm -hmm. it's, used in, it's used to varying degrees of success, I would say, in terms of some lecturers, of course, use it um, as a place simply to put materials if they're mm. working in the classroom. So they could put their presentations there, they could put additional reading materials there. Um, then moving through to lecturers who m use it perhaps more in a blended way so that mm -hmm. they're integrating what happens within the classroom um, but then extending that learning through Moodle and then we get to the other extreme, which is what we have, where we have an online course which is totally run um, using Moodle. Right. So we, we shouldn't really have lecturers who have no knowledge of VLE. Mm. They've all got some background and they should all have some sort of starting point on which to build. Yeah. And as we go through this, you, you'll see that they can be very good at doing the passive element of um, using Moodle, the repository mm. to put um, documents. Uh, but it's getting that transition to the more active elements of using Moodle, which is needed to make the online learning work. Yeah. So. In terms of how we approach this as a group, we just sort of looked at what was happening in a classroom. So start with what everybody knows and understands. So in terms of a classroom environment, we know certain things. It's time bound. You walk into the classroom at one point and you know two hours later or three hours later, you're going to walk out. So it's clearly defined in terms of time. It's a controlled environment. Um, you've got control. You, the, the students were in that room with you, and how you use that time is under your control. You can decide when a discussion will happen. You can decide when an activity will happen. You can decide how you're going to use your PowerPoint. You've got all the students there together as a group. So mm. you are delivering 
you know, to a large group of people all at once. It tends to be content driven. Although there can be activities in there, the main aim is to um, deliver an aspect of content. Um, it, it could still include reflection, discussion, but you're aiming to get that content across. And of course, it's immediate. Um, if a student has a question to ask, they, they ask the question. You answer the question. Um, you can see the looks on people's faces. If they're looking puzzled, you can change direction. Um, you can ask them, do they understand? Um, so you are all together. It, it's, I think what's important for our lecturers is that it happens within a given time, so it's easy to manage. And the reaction to the content and to understanding is quite immediate. So you can see that and manage that um, mm -hmm. within that environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we come to working online, this is where um, things look, start to look different. And this is where that difference has to be managed for it to be a success. So online learning can be time consuming. It takes a lot of time management and organization uh, for lecturers to be able to manage the delivery of online materials. Now it's not, it doesn't need to be specifically the materials themselves, but it's online, um, it's managing the engagement so, for example, if a student emails you, when are you going to answer that email? So there can be lots of small elements of engagement with students, um, which can happen at all different times. So you've got to suddenly um, really manage your time and organize your time. And it can be almost putting time aside, if you like. Um, while you're at your desk to do part of the teaching that you would perhaps go off to a classroom to do in another situation. Your environment is flexible. You know what you want to, the content you want to get across, but um, you can get that across in lots of different ways. There's, not, there's no longer just you standing in front of a classroom um, um, of, of students. There are lots of different methods you can bring and lots of different tools you can bring to the table to get that content across. You're usually dealing with individuals rather than a group because although you, are, you do have a group of students online, they generally can't see each other. So um, you can use the, the sort of the group forums to have discussions, but at the end of the day, you're encouraging, you're motivating, and you're working with individual people um, and supporting them through through the course. Delayed response, if you ask a question or if they ask you a question, you're not in a classroom with them, so there's no immediate um, answer. So things happen at a slight delay. And it's process driven in the sense that it doesn't matter how good your content is. If the students can't find it, if they can't work their way around the Moodle site, um, if they don't know how to use the various tools that you have introduced, then the best content in the world won't make any difference. So mm. a lot of it is around guiding students through the learning process, um, not just giving them the content. Um, yeah. So basically, you know, I'll, I'll do that up. Uh, the classroom <laughs> and the e-learning, they're just totally different beasts. And, right. <laughs> and our aim really is to guide lecturers through so that, you know, we, we sort of we don't have this situation where um, lecturers start to reject almost working online because it just seems so difficult or mm. so different from what they're used to. 
um, that process can be managed and they can be supported through understanding the differences to you know to working very successfully online a number of my uh, the lecturers at work on my program do so very very successfully we've, we've had our teeth in problems but mm. it is possible to very successfully make that transition from working within the classroom to working online if it's understood that the two things are very different and different skills and different expectations must come into play. So just really to sum that up, if we think about what happens in the classroom, um, you've got all of those different elements coming together. So they're receiving content, they're listening, they're reflecting, that's the passive element. But you've also got in the classroom discussions, questions, taking notes making links between theory and practice, giving and receiving feedback, and, and they're engaged in activity. Now, what Moodle does very well, and what most lecturers, in fact, can do really well on Moodle, is the passive element. So they can translate the content, they um, can engage students in reflection of that content through the use of things like PDFs, Word documents, um, you know, links to the files, links to the PowerPoint presentations. And that works really well. But the trick is, how do we get the more active element of the learning, which happens within the classroom? How can we get that on into the online environment? Um, because that's the difference between having a really passive, boring, um, uh, where students struggle to maintain motivation to keep going and mm. having a course which works really well and students want to keep coming back because they should have that engagement. There's no reason for a student working in an online environment not to be engaged with that material. Right. Um, and does your next slide show us what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was I was just looking for um, a way to sort of represent that that engagement online, and I come across a couple of things. Now this is um, called Guerra Scale, and this was. Tim Guerra and Dan Heffernan in 2004 came up with this scale. If you look at the bottom of the screen, it's got a, uh, a web link there. You can find more information. Um, but it was a guy called Mark Rollins, and he took this scale and adapted it in terms of Moodle. So what we can see here, if you think it's you start at yes one, which is your most passive form of content online. And the scale actually goes up to GS10. Now, 10, as you can imagine, is complete virtual reality, which is not something we can achieve using Moodle. So we can, using Moodle, we can get from 1 to 7 safely on this scale. And 1 to 3, you're looking at your more passive engagement. And 4 to 7, you're looking at your more active engagement. So when we're working with lecturers and when we're sort of looking at how we can um, engage students actively online we're really looking at the on the scale um, GS4 to GS7 in terms of embedding some of these elements within the learning to help us um, to engage the students actively now depending on whatever VLE you're using it will differ in terms of Moodle, there are certain things that Moodle allows us to do. Uh, for example, where it says book, it doesn't mean the traditional book. In Moodle, there is a book element where it allows you to, as a lecturer or even as a student, to write the book yourself and have walkthrough pages. And within that book, you can embed um, YouTube clips, you can embed uh, podcasts, um, voiceover presentations. So the book is a feature of Moodle, um, which is allows you to um, deliver content. Um, we can use screen captures video demonstrations, flash animations. Um, 
Moodle is really good in this way that it does allow allow you to embed um, a number of features in, um, which if you know those tools are out there and you can use those tools, then they can become a really successful part of your of the delivery of, of your content. Um, the other Can I ask you a question, Liz? Yeah, um, the bottom one that I could see yeah. on there, um, chat. On the Guerra and, scale. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the chat messaging uh, forum. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that is that part of the, the Moodle, uh, or is that uh, do you use external, uh, me, you know, applications or methods to achieve that? And are you talking live in live chatting or? Um, you know, asynchronous? Both. Um, okay. All of those things, the chat, the forum, the wiki, and the messaging are all integrated within Moodle. So messaging, we use an awful lot on the courses because it's instant. So if the students can see if I'm online, and for example, or they can see if each other is online because a lot of this happens from student to student. This is not just student to tutor. And they can send a message and it instantly pops up on the screen in front of me. I can type a reply and it goes back. So you can, it's, an, it's a way of having a personal conversation with that student um, that's in real time. Right. The, the chat, we do have the, um, within Moodle itself, there's, you can have a live chat. Now this is a typed chat. Um, which we've used for the last couple of years very successfully. So for my students, for example, we arrange an evening. And within that evening, usually quite late, so you know, lots of my students have children. So we arrange a time when the children have gone to bed, we can all sit down together. And it's a type chat, but it's real time. So mm -hmm. it takes a bit of getting used to. Um, and if you've got lots of students, it does scroll very fast. But you can manage that. Um, and once the students have sort of got used to it, it is a really, really nice way um, of, of having a discussion. Going forward, though, into the new year, we're actually um, uh, experimenting with the um, uh, web conferencing um, mm -hmm. Programs, I think, is it is it Adobe? Is it Connect? Uh, Adobe Connect, yeah. Yeah. There's, that, a, there's a number. Num there's a number of. There's them, a number of there? them. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, um, collaboration, live collaboration, sort of webinar tools that are available. Yeah. Um, we've we've used various ones, uh, but the university now has um, a license to be able to use um, the Adobe version. So we will be introducing that to students just to take it up a level to be able to have um, well to be able to see each other and perhaps be able to talk to each other um, it just makes it a, perhaps a little bit more personal than just the type chat but we will see because the students you know just because it's all singing and dancing doesn't necessarily mean the students will like it more so the, the, the trick is, is to try out the variations and see which works best for your cohort of student with the type of skills and level of experience that they have. Now we know the live chat, which is simply typed, works. And yeah. if, the, you know, if the more sophisticated program um, doesn't work, then we've got that to fall back on. But it's about thinking and how to extend your course and how to, again, develop this interactivity. Um, it's, it's about using the best tools that we have available to us, um, but trying out different tools to find out which one is the best. Um, you know, I, my students are really open to trying things out and they want that engagement. They want to uh, 
um, chat with us. They want to interact with the course. Therefore, they're willing to try things out to find the best way of achieving that. Um, so it's very much, it's not just us as tutors or lecturers dictating to the students. Um, it's not about us saying, oh, we're going to use this. It's about saying, right, have a go at this. What do you think? Does it work? Um, if yes, great. How can we use it moving going forward? If not, OK, shall we go back to the old way? Um, but it is really, it's about all of us together working out that engagement and making that engagement work. They've got to have buy-in because if they mm -hmm. don't have buy-in, they simply won't use it and they won't turn up at nine o'clock in the evening when you're going to have your chat. Um, so it, it's... It's, it's a collaborative thing. It's about everybody working together to find the best way to move forward. And that best way can change from cohort to cohort. Um, sometimes, you know, we have a group of students who really love working in a certain way online, and that works very successfully for them. But then when you come and try and replicate that with the next cohort, you find, well, actually, they prefer doing it in a different way. And mm. we've got to be responsive to that. And we've got to work with each cohort to find out what works best for them and how they like to communicate best with you and not being afraid to make those changes and to, um, yeah, just, just to see what works best and then to go with that as opposed to trying to impose ways of working with students. Because when they're online, you haven't got them in the classroom. You know, they, they just don't switch the computer on if they don't like the way you're working. Um, so, you know, we've got to be responsive to their needs. Yeah. Um, just quickly, uh, this slide, um, I was looking at a different model, and this is Bloom's taxonomy. Now, this is the revised taxonomy, and then revised again um, to look at it in a digital way. Um, and this was simply to look at what a student could do using Moodle um, to try to uh, r respond to each of the levels within within the taxonomy. So. This just gives you an idea of the different tools that not only ourselves as lecturers, but students have. So the student can engage with blogs, they can um, use individual wikis, but they can also do collaborative wikis. They have surveys, they have choices, which is a way of the lecturer will put perhaps a question up and they will vote against that question. Um, we've got podcast wikis, screen capture. So there are lots of different ways really of using a VLE to guide the student and to support them through the different um, skills um, that we, we hope they're going to develop as they're working through the various levels of the course. So just very briefly to conclude then, um, online delivery is different and I think the best thing we can do when working with uh, lecturers working with anybody who is moving to online delivery is to acknowledge that it's different um, and almost to say right what happens within your classroom is one thing but when we're working online we need to think about it in a different way and if we can support lecturers and their needs, we can develop their needs um, to work in an online environment, then we can aid that transition and make it a lot easier. Um, what we know is that the passive content trans translates very well onto Moodle. So lots of lecturers are halfway there. They can do the passive content really well. They can move their PowerPoints onto Moodle. They can move documents onto Moodle. But what we need to do is to think about how we can actively engage the online students because they don't get to come into the classroom and have that engagement. Um, 
And we can do that by understanding the various tools that we can use within Moodle to actively engage students. So it's about using the tools that are available within Moodle and also external to Moodle that can be imported into Moodle to make that learning as active as we possibly can. Okay, so if I go back... So there, I'm back. Brilliant. Yeah, I can see you again. <laughs> that, that was great. Thanks very much. Yeah, um, a couple of um, questions for you, really. So, do you think do you think that? Um, I mean, there's a suggestion that uh, it's uh, going to take some investment in a way by uh, ex academics, lecturers, um, to to um, when when the institution wants to move to a more distance learning approach or a, a, you know remote learning or however, however yeah. you want to describe it um, and they basically they've got to learn um, in a way new skills as far as adapting to new technologies are concerned perhaps mm -hmm. using video for example or podcasts mm -hmm. Um, but they've also got to learn, do you think, do you agree with this kind of new, I hate this word, new pedagogical skills um, as well? I think they, a lot of the skills that they, they need, they already have. It's just recognising that within a different environment, they have to be used in different ways. So there's, there's no lecturer out there who doesn't manage their time. Time management, organisation, all of it's already there. It's just recognising that it's done in a slightly different way. Um, so, you know, when you know you're going into the classroom between this time and this time, and you work everything else around that, but when you're online, because you don't have a physical place to go off to, you have to think in a slightly different way. The, the time management is, is no different. It's just thinking about it and putting it into practice um, just takes a bit more thought, I guess. It, it's, it's about taking the skills that you already know you have and rethinking them so that they will work equally well when you're working with online students. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm not so sure it needs a complete new set of skills. No, I, I don't think so. I just think it needs to be consciously thought about again with the online environment in mind. So really your message is kind of to, 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 to those lecturers who, for whom this is um, a new challenge, your message is about reassurance really. You're saying you've got the skills. Absolutely. And it's just yeah, um, yeah. about supporting that transition and applying the skills in a different area that you already have and the knowledge which is you know obviously yeah. it's the gift yeah. it's the gift of imparting the knowledge and I, um, I'd say an experienced classroom lecturer is 80 percent of the way there they've just got to rethink some of the things and think about how they can make it work where they haven't got the students as a group in front of them you know, lots of the ways of thinking, they still do the same amount of planning in terms of going into the classroom, what activities, how best to engage the students. All of that still exists. That way of thinking still exists. It's just that perhaps they need a few more tools to do that. Um, and just to, I say, consciously think about how they're going to achieve that where the student is at a distance. Okay, thanks very much, Liz.